Well, back to the drawing board. Had these cut using the old shocks as mock-up. And as you can see, there's plenty of room. Well, on this one, you can see that's as far as you get. A little bit of modifying, you can get them close, but it just ain't enough. So I'm going to have to design some new ones in a second and go get them cut. So, I mean, I could cut this off, but then every time the customer goes to replace the shocks, they'll have to cut this cover off. And that's, that's not the right way to do it. So I'm going to go get some more cut. It is what it is. And we'll get her done. Well, first attempt. Didn't work. Not everything works out the first time. When I made these, uh, like I showed in the previous video, this collar wasn't on the other one. And then, like I said, also, I'm not cutting that off. So with this mocked up, you could see touching does not reach, does not work. So back to the drawing board. You know, not everything's perfect the first time. If I wouldn't have got these new shocks in, I wouldn't have known about this and that would have been a problem and you'd have to have to cut this collar off every time and that's just not, that's not right. So. All right, so this is what I've come up with. This was the first design I made, which, hold on. My, sim, my first design was basically copying this one to a point, adding to it, and adding my own little, you know, little extra here, little meat there. But like we showed, it didn't work. Like, I don't even know how they even made this one work being yeah it would have hit the shot That's probably why it was ripping out so this one i already had it on the truck it's just kind of hard to do one-handed if i line up the hole then i can tuck this that far and it ends up being on the vehicle when i had this kind of mocked up real quick the shock, instead of being out here, which I can show you on a second, it sits way back here, so there's plenty of room, plenty of adjustability. So, we'll get these cut and try again. To kill some time until we can go get those cut, I'm gonna go ahead and do these wheel bearings on both sides. We'll set the camera up and get that started. Both sides tore apart, cleaned up. As you can see from the bearings, they were absolutely disgusting. Full of rust, moisture, old grease, new grease. So we've got them all cleaned out. These I had to polish up some. This one was really bad. This was the best I can get it. I should have done it before video. But these were absolutely disgusting. So we're gonna head down and get some new bearings, inners, outers, new seals. I have some grease, but we'll probably go ahead and get some new grease. We'll get these packed and ready. New cotter pins. I mean, whoever was working on this one, I mean, it was, this is the only thing that was in one side. 
just a piece. It was probably, they were in a jam and had to do it, so they probably broke this piece off of this one to use it in the other side. This was in the opposite side, just another piece. I'll get all new cotter pins in the whole vehicle because the upper and lower ball joints were the same way as the tie rods, just little pieces barely holding it in. So, we'll grab all them parts and like I said, put this back together and make this ride smoothly. Back with the bearings. Got them all. I'm going to start packing them and put them in. Alright. Got everything back in. Greased everything. Like I said, you got to pack them. Uh, you got to pack your bearings. Um, there's tons of videos and stuff like that on how to do it. Everything's back in. New cotter pins. Both of them. All I got left is to put the dust shields on. These just tap right on. I'll smack these on and then these are done. I'm actually about to go get the new brackets. We're gonna cut them on the table. He's available, so we're gonna go ahead and go knock that out. So let's go for a ride. Got back. These are the new ones. I'll get them cleaned up and uh, tack them up and put them through the cycle again. I'll try this one more time. I had to cut them down. They were hitting the upper control arm, so I trimmed them down because he made them a hair bigger for me. Um, but I went ahead and trimmed them down to the exact size of my template. And uh, I put the template up there with the upper control arm. Let's see here, I'll show you the template. Had it tacked over here before I put the control arm in, and well, I was like, oh yeah, let's uh, check that. That didn't work. So it'll be able to go right there and not touch that nut. So we'll get it close to here, probably centered over this spot, centered over this hole, and that should be plenty of clearance. Trial and error. Sometimes you have to test fit, try it. If it don't work, test fit some more. And go from there. Both shock mounts are tacked in at the moment. I tacked them in with the upper control arm in. There's enough room to get them out. It's one of my concerns as well. I've already measured, checked all the cycles. These will work out perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld them up. Get everything put back together and get this thing, uh, this front end completely done. 
Yeah, both sides are fully welded up. And we'll go ahead and see what they look like. Welded them, like I said, all the way around both sides. Both sides of the tabs on both sides of the vehicle. I'm ready to go. Clean those up, start reassembling everything, put it back together. And like I said, the front end of this will be done. I had to get some hardware for the shocks. So I went ahead and got some paint to color match. Ended up going with some metallic aluminum. Worked pretty good. Got a control arm in, as you can see. It got plenty of room. I haven't got the other side in, but it's all painted as well. I'm gonna start reassembly right now. Start getting these parts back in. All right, got everything all back together. Everything except for the wheels. Shocks are on. Lift it up tight. Bags are in, everything's connected. Cotter pins, new cotter pins. Get the wheels on and get this thing back down on and all fours. And she's out of here. Look it up, buddy. Oh. Shop inspector. Double checking my work, making sure it's good and up to par. All done, back on the ground. Charging up the battery. I like to top it off, make sure I'm sitting here for the whole time I've been working on it. And if you don't use it, they'll drain. We got a little bit more left to do. Adding a backup button for the poppers. Then uh, the customer will come get it and this thing's done. New relay is ran, wires already ran, as you saw in the test video. Made a template. You know, it's gonna sit down there up behind the bumper. Already cut it, bent it, painted it. Painted it to match the metallic flake on the frame on the rest of the rest of the parts. So I'll get that together now and get back and show you guys how it works and show you the button on it and everything together. All right, this bad boy is done. Got the switch bolted up, wired up. You know, sometimes these switches come in handy. Say the customer locked his keys in his vehicle can't get in. You don't want to damage the door by using one of those little balloons at the top with the rod to pop the lock. Well, they'll just walk up to the bumper, like I said, this one. Hidden right here behind the bumper with a bracket. 
All you gotta do is, and you're in. So, that one's done. I'll pull the charger, start it up, pull it out, and off it goes. All right, well, one last thing. I'm throwing this in, something I like to do. Um, if your battery dies, your hood's down, can't use your poppers, well, I'm making a emergency hood latch, some cables, some hose, and if your battery dies, you'll be able to pop the hood, put a jump on the battery, and then you'll be able to get the truck open and go from there. So, figured I'd knock this out for the customer before he comes and gets it. That's all finished up. Just like I said, battery dies. These shaved vehicles, you really can't get into them. Your popper won't work. So like I said, I added a hidden hood pop. So now under emergencies, you can get in the vehicle. All right. Pulling it out, this one's done. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Give us a follow. Look at that lift. It's a lot more uh, lift now that we adjusted the shock mounts. The shock mounts are keeping it from going as high as it is now. Dump status. <laughs> 